Have you ever imagined that your future coworker might be a robot? How do you envision the world to look like by 2030? Self-driving cars driving you to work? First humans on Mars? Or even, let me ask you this, have you ever taken the time to realize that we have absolutely no idea what the world will look like by the end of the century? One thing is for sure though, is that we're quite horrible at predicting the future. A famous movie from 1989 predicted that by 2015, uh, Jaws 11 would be in the movie theaters and you could skate on your hoverboard. Well, sadly enough, there was only four Jaws movies and I couldn't find any hoverboard on my way here. I could go on and on to prove just how horrible we are predicting the future, but really all you have to do is just look at some famous movies from the 80s and trust me, you'll have a good laugh. But you know what? Even if we're horrible at predicting the future, I'm going to attempt it Anyways, because sometimes the simple act of imagining what the future could be like can help to guide it. And well, it's also a lot of fun. For example, there's this really famous shoe company that finally released self-lacing shoes. You probably guessed it, but the idea came from the same movie. The simple act of imagining such useless but fun shoes over 30 years ago was all it needed to make it a reality. So here's my prediction for 2030. Drum roll, please. By the end of the decade, you will have a robot coworker. Okay, now I use the term robot and coworker loosely here. Really what I mean is that uh, by robot coworker, any non-biological machine that you can interact with just as you would with a regular human being. They'll likely not be humanoid shape, but rather be built for their own specific application. It could be as simple as asking a robot to put boxes in inventory or even asking a robot to perform an inspection. The only difference between now and then is that by then you won't need your own remote control to operate them or write your own programming code. Now, you might be saying, Gabriel, I, I think you're just really horrible at predicting the future. What is a science fiction nonsense? Well, what if I told you that this was already becoming a reality? In some part of the world, robot taxis are already a thing. So for example, in Phoenix, Arizona, you can hop on a fully autonomous self-driving taxi. They work just as a regular taxi. You hop on in the car, you tell the destination and the car drives you to the location you want. The only difference is that you, of course, don't have to drive the car yourself or write the program. It's as simple as asking a destination, just as you would like with a regular taxi driver and you get there. Minus the awkward small talk in between, of course. Besides, our technological progress has been exponential over the last century. Tasks that are now, today, impossible will soon be trivial. Did you know, for example, that your mobile phone in your pocket right now is a million times more powerful than the Apollo spacecraft that took the first humans to the moon in 1969? In other words, your phone that you have now could theoretically guide millions of Apollo rockets to the moon at the same time. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? With modern computers, we can do just the same, plus we can land the rocket back on this launch pad, a task that was still conceived to be completely impossible six years ago until it was finally done. With this in mind, it's not as crazy to think that robots could very well become our future co-workers. Ironically enough, it's not the prowess of space engineering or science fiction that got me into robotics. <laughs> no, not at all. It all started with a simple video of a drone flying I saw on Facebook eh, a little while ago. The curiosity struck. I had to build one for myself. I did a self-study. I'll look how I could build one. I ordered the parts online from China. It took about a month to arrive. It took me about a day or two to build, but guess how long it actually took me to make it fly? It took me four months. All these months, I was struggling to make it work, and my friends would come by my room laughing at me, seeing the drone unfinished, and saying I could never make it work. But their pessimism is all I needed to fuel my inner drive. So surely enough, one day I finally fixed it. And once my friends heard about this news, they rushed into my room and they asked me to see it fly for the first time. Peer pressure got me, we all went outside, I set the drone on the ground. My friends were outside, watching this drone finally take off for the first time in all these months of work. But let me pause here a second. Back then, I've never flown a drone or even knew how to operate one. So how do you think it went? 
Well, the moment the drone took off, a windburst appeared out of nowhere, blew the drone away, and before I could realize, I had lost complete control over the drone, and it flew on its own toward infinity and beyond. I've never seen this drone again in my life. It was painful. All this month of hard work literally flying away before my eyes in a matter of a second. Any regular human being would have most likely given up at this point, but no, not me. I am way too stubborn to give up that easily. So I had to do, I, I had to do what I had to do. I swallowed back my tears. I looked back at my friends and asked them to stop laughing at me. And I got back to work. And ever since I fell in love with robotics, I fell in love with robotics because of the infinite possibility to give us to do good for the world. This passion has been leading my life ever since this fateful day that I lost my drone. Nowadays, I work as a researcher and closely collaborate with industry partners to push the frontier if possible with drone technology. My latest research is called The Beast, but don't be afraid, there's nothing to fear. The concept is rather quite simple. In the near future, boxers with drones will be set all across the Netherlands to intervene in case of emergency. Car crash on the highway, drones flies on location within three minutes to relay back video information to first responders, fully autonomously. This extra minutes of knowledge will be crucial to improve situational awareness for emergency response. These extra minutes of knowledge could very well make the difference between life and death for many. With the beast research, we hold to build a safer, more resilient world. In this near future, these drones won't just be tools used by, coworker, by, used by emergency response teams. There will be coworkers working along them, alongside them to perform the task. This is just one example amongst a sea of others. More than you would realize, robots, drones, no matter how you want to call them, they are slowly integrating our daily life, helping us perform our job just like any other employee would. All fun aside, I would be lying if I said there was nothing to worry about. Soon, these drones, robots, will be able to perform virtually any task we set them to do, which will give unlimited power to its creators. And as we say, with great powers come great responsibility. Let me put it this way. In the near future, we could have millions of robots taking care of agriculture and feeding the hungry. But what if these same robots could be used to destroy plantation? We could build millions of boat robots cleaning away our plastic pollution in the ocean. But what if these same robots could be used to blockade vital trade routes? We could build millions of flying drones planting force all over the world. But what if these same drones could be used to start unforeseen forest fire. That you choose to go in the field of robotic or not, we all share this responsibility of what we do with this power. More than ever, we must realize that our tech choices of today will define what the world of tomorrow will become. Let me finish with this. We may not be able to predict the future as we're quite horrible at it, honestly, but one thing rests sure is that we can build it. So let's make sure to use the unlimited power of robotics for the good of humanity and build a future worth living.